Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB Foundation Exam Questions and Answers. In this video, I'm going to cover another five questions from another exam set. So this is a new exam set and I'll be explaining all of these questions in very detail so you can easily understand how you are going to attempt these questions and answer correctly in your ISTQB Foundation exam. So the first question of this particular set says, which of the following is a typical test objective? Okay, typical test objective. So out of these four options, we have to select one. So make sure you read how many options you have to select initially. And then you are sure that you just have to select one option or two option accordingly. Okay, so typical test objective, if we go ahead and see the list here, validating that documented requirements are met. Okay, that's a little contradictory when we are saying validating Right. So if we talk about verification of V model, that's verification and that's validation. Right. So if they are saying validating the documented requirements, so that is basically more of validation. If it would have been verif verifying the document documented requirements, that's more of a test objective, but not validating. Right. Then the second one says causing failure. So I think that's not correct. So I'm just crossing it out. Causing failures and identifying defects. This looks very close. So I'll just put a dot in there. Cross this up, this one out. Initiating errors and identifying root causes. That's absolutely baseless. We, test objective is not to initiate errors or identify root cause. That's absolutely incorrect statement. So we straight away cross it out. Let's see the last option. Verifying that uh, verifying the test object meets user expectation. Now this is again the opposite. So basically this is more of this is not verifying. Verifying the test object meets user expectation is more of not verification. It's more of validation, right? Because here it's more of a dynamic testing. So this if it would have been validating the test object meets user expectation, then this statement was correct. Since it says verifying, that's why it's incorrect. So make sure you understand about validating and verifying where exactly they are using validating and where they where they are using verifying. So anything with the requirement you, are, you verify uh, and then anything across the dynamic testing line is more of validation, right? So that leaves us with the B option and that's the correct option causing failures and identifying defects, right? So this is one of the typical test objective when you are doing the testing dynamic testing you are identifying defects and causing you know in the flow in the business flow causing failure so that the defects are identified upfront okay so that's the correct option moving to the next question which of the following statements best describes the difference between testing and debugging okay now we know testing is more of for testers and debugging is more for the developers and developers do debugging so let's see which statement out of these four, which just have to select one option. So out of these four, which one best describe difference between testing and debugging. So the first option says testing causes failures while debugging fixes failures. Second one is testing is a negative activity while debugging is a positive activity. This is absolutely doesn't make any sense. Testing is a negative activity and debugging is a positive activity. So I straight away cross it out. Anything that doesn't make sense for the best description or the worst description, that these sort of questions, you straight away cross that, that out so you get to the options which are really close. Okay. Now, the third option says testing determines that defects exist while debugging removes defect. This looks really close to the answer wherein we are saying testing determines that defect exists while debugging removes defects, right? Then the last option says testing finds the causes of defects while debugging fixes the causes of defect. So testing doesn't find the cause of defect, right? So testing finds defect, but doesn't find the cause. You are not looking for the cause of the defect. So this is also wrong statement. If we talk about the first one, testing causes failures while debugging fixes failures. No, debugging doesn't fix failures. Debugging removes defects. So debugging is an activity with which the Developers understand where the issues are, where the failures are, and then based on that understanding, they fix those defects. Debugging in itself doesn't fix the failure. So this is also incorrect statement. Correct statement is C, which is testing determines the cause, uh, determines that defects exist. Okay, so determination of defect is 
found by testing while debugging removes defect right so debugging helps in removing defect that's the correct statement because debugging helps developers to identify the root causes wh where exactly the failures are happening why they are happening and then debugging eventually helps in removing those failures and defects so c is the correct statement for second question moving to the third question of this particular video the absence of defects policy is one of the principles of testing right out of the the different principles of testing which of the following is an example of addressing this principle in practice now here you might get confused in these sort of answers these sort of questions why because you have to read it very clearly which of the following is an example of addressing this principle in practice now anything which says addressing the principle in practice then you have to choose the option which doesn't straight away says or explains about the principle right so there will be couple of options so you will, we just have to select one option but out of these you will find couple of statements which will explain about this absence of defect policy okay for example let's go to the first one explaining that it is not possible for testing to show the absence of defect now this is explaining this is what this principle is all about but in practice is this statement addressing the absence of defect policy not it's it's not doing that right it's just explaining about this principle so we what the question is which of the following is an example of addressing this principle in practice okay so that is why anything which is explaining is not what we are interested in so we can cancel that out cross that out the next option is supporting the end users to perform acceptance testing okay let's mark it this looks close ensuring that no implementation defects remain in the delivered system absolutely incorrect statement now absence of defect fallacy this is again kind of what the principle is so ensuring that no implementation defect remain in the delivered system that's also not correct because this is not addressing this principle in practice then modifying tests that cause no failures to ensure few defects remain that's absolutely incorrect modification of the test that you know this is more of the practice modifying tests that cause no failures to ensure few defects remain that's you know not correct in this particular principle of testing case so what exactly is the correct example of addressing this principle is supporting the end users to perform acceptance testing right now when you will support the end users to perform acceptance testing you are actually addressing the absence of defect policy why because when the end users perform acceptance testing even though you know that absence of errors in a particular application is a policy or absence of defects is a policy but still when the end users perform acceptance testing that will ensure that the end user or the requirement or the business flow that is required actually by the business and the end users is working correctly and fulfills the needs of the end users and that's how you are addressing this principle not the other statements which are basically just explaining about the principle so here anything which says addressing you have to go ahead and read properly and choose the option which actually addresses that principle and not explains about that principle okay so b is the correct answer for question number 3 now moving to the question number 4 of this particular video which of the following test activities are most likely to involve the application of boundary value analysis and equivalence partition okay so most likely which of these activities and you have to select two options so you read these which how many options you have to choose so out of these test activities where you will apply most likely to involve bva and ep okay so in if we talk about test implementation do we do during implementation do you involve bva and ep no not at all right so we cross that out during test design yes this is where we apply boundary value analysis and equivalence partitioning during the design and analysis so if you have gone through the videos straight away you will get to know the answer that during test design and test analysis 
that's where you apply the BVA and equivalence partition not during test execution because then you have already designed your test case you are executing that okay you are doing dynamic testing you do BVA and EP while designing and analyzing so that you come up with the test scripts that when you execute you then execute with those BVA and EP partitioning and the data then test monitoring no not at all so the correct answer is B and E for this question number four okay now moving to the last question of this particular video given the following test where okay so this is the test where wherein we have the coverage item change request test execution schedule and prioritize test conditions and the following test activities test analysis design implementation and completion which of the following best shows the test where produced by the activities okay now we have to map the test where with the activities and whichever is the best option best shows the mapping that's what we have to select and we have to select one option out of these a b c d so let's go and see so the first thing is go through these test activities and test where and then see if you are 100 percent sure about any of these test activities and the test where and if you have gone through the syllabus and the course you will understand what are the test where produced by the test analysis activity by the test design activity by the test implementation activity and straight away you can basically go ahead and map okay so even if you know one or two you will be able to eliminate couple of options and conclude the answer okay so let's go and see for example the test activity if we talk about the test analysis right so what what could be a test where when you are doing the test analysis okay so if we say test analysis do you get coverage item as part of the test analysis do you get change request or do you get test execution sh schedule as the uh, test where no none of these above will be the test where for the test analysis activity during the test analysis activity it's more of analyzing doing the analysis and then coming up with the applying different test design techniques and then also coming up with the prioritized test condition right so with a so basically four goes clearly with a okay so if we know for this test analysis activity prioritized test condition is what we are going to get now four goes with a let's see where exactly on which options four and a are there so now we know that in the a option there is a mapping for four and a and in d there is mapping for four a so if you are 100 percent sure we can straight away cross these two options and now we just have to work out the a between a and d so we have got four and four a right now let's see so the a option says one b and d option says one map to d so if we go ahead and say coverage item okay so coverage item the first option says is test design okay so coverage item uh, coverage item is test design and then the first option for the d says one is mapped to d which is basically coverage item is test completion right so coverage item is test completion that not correct so d option doesn't look correct let's map the other because if you see coverage item and the test completion test completion is more so anything in the test activity when you are doing test completion change requests right is is the last bit wherein it comes to the end part right so anything so change request is more close to what test completion is so that means d should be mapped to 2 right so 2d and 2d is mapped with a so that's why this looks more correct and 3c so 3 which is test execution schedule which is more of test implementation absolutely correct so we can eliminate this one as well and now we know we are left with a and a is the correct answer coverage item is test design right absolutely fine absolutely correct then we have change request which is d so 2 is d which is basically test completion after post test completion that's the test where for this test completion activity okay and then test implementation is only the last option uh, left which is test execution schedule so three maps to c so test during test implementation you come up with the test where test execution schedule as well okay so even if you know one or two you will be able to conclude and find these answers very easily okay so that's how so the uh, the correct answer for this one is a and we just have to select one option so that's how you are going to conclude the answer 
Okay, so that's all for this video in which I have covered five ISTQB foundation exam questions. In the next one, I'll cover another five exam questions with detailed answers. Thank you. See you in the next one.